Welcome to the Keel Hauled Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea of Thieves news to cover today. So tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. This week, we're going to be joined by the captains in the Gold Hoarder channel. We're going to be talking about uh, Season 7's latest adventure, as well as a little bit from the podcast that they just put out over at Rare, uh, their Gamescom information that we learned about. And we're going to be talking about our favorite characters, who we think would win between the Reapers and the Dark Brethren Corps. All that more on this week's episode of Keel Hauled Podcast. But before I get into any of that, I have to thank the patrons. They are the ones that are in this call. They're the ones that are supporting me. They are the ones that are making sure that this podcast is uh, taken care of when it comes to paying the bills. So thank you to People's Republic, El Cute, Balls, Bam Bam Bagel, Captain Hasco, Chateau Neuf, Zombie Killer, Cloud, Cosmic Johnson, Davram TV, El Jefe Esteban, Fergatron, Trickster, Jabaro 5, Carl Embo, Kazia the Rogue, Lumpy SRQ, Ocarian Darth, Dub Dub Goose, Evil Morpheus, Xbox Mike 29, Murphy Lives, NX Gamer, Raja the Brave, Russ Bell Kid, Norwegian, Skinny Matt, Scum Melt 666, Sudesh, Tarnished Film, That Kilted Guy, TN Professor, Real Big Tuna, Big Bad Pad, Mina Fairy, Super Pack, Music Me, The Lore Chronologist, Dead Eye Dre, Ghost Boy 20, Evil Martha, Peter Miller, Rooski Doo, Straw Hack Hunter, Thor Von Blitz, Windsor Chris, and Zam. Wow, thank you all so much for your support. It really does help out. It helps take care of uh, things that you don't really associate with podcasts. I'm going to be looking into some new software to see if I can make uh, some of these other adventures that I'm taking uh, a little bit easier. And you guys are helping me do that. So thank you. I appreciate it. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Welcome everyone to the uh, Keel Hauled Community episode. This is the episode that is done for the community members through the Gold Hoarder program, which is part of the Patreons. Uh, you guys are all Patreon members, and I want to thank you first off for jumping on to take some of your your time away. You're already donating, so this is this is the opportunity that I wanted to give you all to really talk about uh, Sea of Thieves and how you feel about it, because it's one thing for me to sit here and talk about it as much as I usually do. Uh, I love getting your feedback about this uh, that can then be given to the devs, because I think the devs really value finding out how people feel about the the uh, adventure that's out now, as well as the season in general. So um a lot of the conversation recently has been about uh, the Hunter's Cry adventure. Um, for those that uh, didn't listen to last week's episode, maybe you were waiting because it was full of spoilers. Uh, we're going to be talking about it here again. There's a good chance that we're going to be talking about spoilers as we're going to be talking about the design and their experiences with it. So just as kind of a warning, I wanted to let you all know there's a good chance that if you haven't done Hunter's Cry yet, again, pause this episode and wait until you finish it out until uh, you you come to this episode to be able to listen to what we're talking about. Um, so talking about Hunter's Cry, uh, there has been a lot of mixed feelings about it. A lot of people have feelings about how it's implemented, um, how it's been received, what people thought, intent versus implementation um i'm curious to kind of go down the line and if you if you guys have an opportunity to have an opinion of this uh definitely jump in but let's start off kind of with uh introducing everyone who's with us today so right off the bat working down our list we've got el jefe esteban who's coming off of a cold jefe how are you feeling how are you doing uh, i feel human today so it's a stark improvement from the last several so good. doing good I'm glad. I know you were under the weather, and I'm I'm glad you're feeling better. Uh, after Hefe, we have Carl Embo. Carl, welcome. How you doing? I'm uh, doing well, thank you. Excellent. Glad to hear it. Uh, after Carl, we have Kylia, the aficionado. Kylia, are you there? I am. Is this thing on? It 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 is. It's all on. Cool. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> welcome. Good to have you here. Uh, after Kylia, Norwegian, joining us. How are you doing, Norwegian? Fantastic. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, Norwegian is followed by People's Republic. Peoples, how you doing? Doing well, Logan. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, after Peoples, we have Registella joining us from down under. How are you doing? It's early. Yeah, early as early as always for me. Yeah, I'm doing good. Just came back from a CFE's role playing game session, which is a lot of a lot more fun than I thought it would be. 
And for those who don't know, it's basically CFE's D&D edition. Or is it D&D, CFE's edition? I don't know. I don't know that it's technically D&D if you guys are doing the role-playing game, because I think the rules are different. But essentially, it's a tabletop role-play. Yeah, pretty much. So also, uh, after Regis, we have Tian Professor. Tian, how you doing? I'm on the road, so I'm coming to you from a hotel. Well, I'm glad that you could join us. Appreciate it, even if uh, internet's going to be a little wonky. And then last but not least, uh, after Tian Professor, we have Zombie Killers. Zombie, how you doing? Doing good, just my first time here. Just getting used to everything. And trying to, trying to put, well, put, how to put this politely? Putting feedback where it needs to be. Sounds good. Well, well, we'll be getting into conversations about all kinds of fun stuff uh, as we get into today's episode. So um, right off the bat, Hunter's Cry. Uh, we had news from the studio. They recently put out a tweet that said that they are going to be reducing the number of ships that can spawn into Hunter's Cry from the, I believe, original five down to up to uh, two. So most um, people are going to be playing it now uh, with themselves or one other crew in the actual uh, little arena, the little little uh, instance that they've created. And as such, they've decided to increase the allotted time so that if there is only one crew in there, uh, you can complete it without having to worry about the 30 minute time frame. I think they increased it uh, probably up to around 45, I would guess 45 to an hour. Uh, has everyone here been able to do the Hunter's Cry? Or I guess a better question is, is has someone not been able to do the Hunter's Cry yet? Oh, Regis, you said no. Regis, have you not done that? <laughs> Unfortunately, no, because I haven't, I, I was, there was supposed to be a stripper thing that happened like a few days ago, but didn't get around to the, the thing got cancelled so and plus I don't do well with just I prefer, I prefer to do adventures solo but with the thing with the thing about the you know cooperating ones you never know who you get a counter on the waves especially with the negativity I've heard about this adventure specifically yeah that's mm-hmm. really fair um okay so mm-hmm. do you mind us kind of diving into this then I know you've been kind of uh listening to a lot of what's been going on around it go right ahead for all I care Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to play it anytime soon anyway. Okay. All right. Well, we'll kind of dive into it. i um, very curious to hear how people feel about it. So uh, right off the bat, how are people feeling about the fact that they've come out and stated that this is going to be changed? You're no longer going to be coming up against multiple crews at most, maybe one other one. Do you think that this was the uh appropriate change to the adventure anyone uh have any any thoughts on that half i saw you pop up given the fact that they made that change after it hit retail it was probably the easiest adjustment that they could make without having to take it offline i would think yeah. so in that instance i would say sure yeah it's probably the right move to make for you know what they were trying to accomplish it still feels what's the word i'm looking for like they were grasping at straws, um, even with that that solution. It, I, I don't know if it'll work. It'll be less likely to to have problems. But I know overall the adventure was short for a reason. But we loaded in and there were five crews, and we were the only one actually doing the event. Everybody was was asking how to raise sails and and how to change weapons and falling off the mountain. And uh, I, I was waiting to hear Hefe. Um, use his uh words when we had to do the uh parkour stuff but uh he did pretty well uh, years, years of practice in self-control <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, it was a hot mess from the beginning uh for us but we got on real early mm-hmm. because we expected that this thing would be a a total disaster right after we heard what they were planning no, um, I want to touch on that, but I, I saw uh, Kylie, our Norwegian peoples, um, you guys had some thoughts? I feel like it's a little too late. I mean, in, in an event that's not terribly long anyways, you took over a week to fix it, quote, quote, and all your fix was was reducing, reducing the ship count. Mm-hmm. We had uh, two groups of people on separate servers try and do the adventure, and we were all in a party together. And one of us was successful because everybody actually tried to do it. And one of us was absolute chaos. And so 
when you think a good portion of the community is going, hey, this is a new thing and I want to try this right away. Well, by the time they're fixing it, most of us have it done. Yeah. Yeah. It came it came pretty late. Uh, Peoples, jump in. Yeah, I think uh, either way, whether they fixed it or they didn't fix it, I think that the um, the interest in the event is going to be less on the second week. Uh, anyway, um, I think that this event could be a special thing if everybody was playing uh, the the right role and doing it the right way. Uh, but there's a lot of moving parts um, to this. For me, uh, my crew on Friday, right after it came out, it, it was literally 15 minutes in and out, and we we got it done. Uh, you know, no issue. Um, my my problem uh, outside of the potential toxic uh, toxicityness of uh, of it was that I was running one of the um, uh, lighthouses um, because you have to kind of ping pong back and forth and kind of how you get up the thing between multiple lights and things like that. Um, so I was on the lighthouse sword dashing back and forth to to shine those lights. Um, but because I was down at the bottom, um, by the time we cleared the last one and I ran all the way up to the top to uh, to see the conclusion, um, I didn't get to see the end cinematic. So mm. I, I think that's a, um, a kind of a short-sighted thought as well. If the idea is to have this grandiose, um, you know, thing um, on my end. Well, let's let's dive into that a little bit uh, later. Norwegian, what were your thoughts on the change? It needed a change badly but too little too late um especially after all the reports from insiders that this was going to be an issue um the fact that they came out saying that we didn't think it was going to be this bad they they should have known um kind of like what you said i think it was last week expect the worst of everybody um this event should be a solo adventure not something with the opportunity uh to create this kind of a mess it i had myself a special experience it was with people that were on nerf accounts that didn't just violate the game it, they violated xbox uh code of conduct reported all of that but it was it was pretty bad so just that it, it still has that potential to go that route is disappointing yeah no i i i feel that a hundred percent um i haven't heard from zombie or carl any any feelings from you guys carl uh, yeah so I, I did it twice personally. I did it the first time with my son, Ollie, mm-hmm. and it was very early on. It was on the first day of release, and we got through it very quickly. Um, no issues. Everyone waited at the end before doing the capstone. I, I think I got very lucky, to be honest. Um, the second time I did it with Sam, and we had to actually run through it twice, because the first time we got chucked in, and it was already complete, which was odd. Mm. So everyone was already lit. We, we, literally, we climbed up the ladder at the side of the tavern rather than doing the parkour course oh, uh, so we got that part done and then we did it the second time and we did have grief we had a lot of grief to the point uh, my crewmates almost rage quitting uh, but we effectively just ditched the boat and did have a boat in the end yeah so i, I feel the change I, I i i'm not too sure what to think of it because having two ships if you have one of those crews where they just want to pvp they'll make your life hell Whereas if there's five ships, you've got a chance of at least having two of those ships willing to help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tough because I, I, I see where you're coming from that as far as like having multiple crews, then, you, you know, they talked about in the podcast, actually, how there were, there were Athena patrols out there who were trying to police, uh, the, the bullies, um, that were looking to try and make it a TDM, trying to be toxic about it. Uh, zombie, let's, let's get some thoughts from you. Yeah, the event for the well, not event, I should say adventure was kind of weird for me because I was coming into this with fresh new eyes because I haven't watched any videos. I was coming straight out of work, and for me, as soon as I got in, I was long at a brig, and they were quite friendly until we got there. Climbing up to Spire was kind of a good adventure. We didn't know what to do because it was the first time, and as soon as we got to Health and Merrick. I got shotgun in the back. So it was a weird event overall. And yeah. I didn't get to see the actual end cut scene of it. So I might try it again. One of the things that I wanted to really kind of ask you all, uh, because this was an adventure and the intent of it was to have a lore experience uh, to, to move the story of Sea of Thieves forward. Um, how do you all feel about this adventure and in the 
the main problem that came up was that there was nothing guarding people from being able to uh or, or there was nothing guarding people from missing out on the lore at the end if someone started up from what i could tell it, it really you missed out on some of it do you feel like this is an instance where uh other games will use a cinematic that kicks up regardless of where you're at so if you're not quite through with uh the thing if somebody gets up there um you do miss out on the opportunity to get to the very top up there but at least when you get up there uh or or if if you're in the middle of something you'll get the cinematic so you won't miss out on the experience um sea of thieves does everything in game they don't do cinematics in game. They they don't boot you out of the experience. You get to experience it all right in front of you. And with that, you have to deal with the fact that there are other crews that could be talking over what's going on. They could be jumping on top of uh, Bell's head. You know, they're, they're, you have to take into the player, player experience. So uh, do you all like having the in-game cutscenes played out in front of you and being part of that or would you rather have a a pre-rendered cutscene that kicks up when you get completed with the adventure uh carl let's start with yours your thoughts so i do like the idea of having it in game where it shows your character it kind of like makes you more and your character more involved in the story in my opinion whereas like a pre-recorded cinematic does take that away Mm-hmm. Now, if it's showing what's going on, um, explaining part of the story, fair enough. But I do enjoy having, like, being in part of that, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Uh, Hefe, I saw you, you chirp up there. What do you got? I like it in game because it makes it feel more real, as in, like, it's happening, you know, with your pirate there, you know, kind of all together, instead of doing the kind of cutaway where, you know, then it just kind of feels like a cutaway scene uh so i definitely like the immersion that it gives you being in game i was just thinking probably when it was done the best was probably glitter beard for me you know it allowed you to to play yourself and stand anywhere and uh i think that that was probably the coolest experience being in there and hearing the other crew talk about oh look at this and oh did you hear that and being able to run over and see or or hit it from a different angle and it also gave it some measure of replayability. Yeah, definitely. People's how you feel. No, I agree. I think uh, the in-game immersion is is the way to go. Uh, Rare's pr- proud themselves in, in, in doing it. it. You know, the immersion's there. I think if you broke into a, a cinematic, uh, you break that immersion. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, if the game is about immersion, if the game is about feeling alive in the space that you're doing, um, you have to do it in game. That's it's interesting to to have you uh, also adamant. Is is anyone feel like they would like to go with a cinematic in this case? Because uh, I, I feel like I'm I'm hearing that folks are are bummed out that they're missing out on the the lore aspect of it, but at the same time they want to keep that that style in game. Uh, Kylie, how do you feel about it? I'm actually on the other side of the coin. I'd prefer a cinematic. I feel like when I'm seeing it in game, it doesn't feel as dramatic and like it's this huge moment versus like stopping everything and giving you a cutscene. Mm-hmm. See, I'm I'm kind of of two minds about it as well too. Uh, Zombie, do you have some thoughts on it? Yeah, they could do like something like uh, at the start of the adventure and then start of a Pirates of Tales. When you're going through the sea of the dam or, or tunnel of the dam or whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. at the ending of it, your character gets in, set into like a third person mode. That would be actually a good way to do it because one, it would show you what's happening and you get to see your character right there. However, it would it would be beneficial for everyone if it's like you can do it like emotes while you're doing it, so you don't feel like your character is just staying there like a bum on a log. Yeah. I, I like the idea. I think those are both really good ideas. I know uh, from my perspective, the the benefit of having a cinematic is preservation of the event. Uh, with this adventure going away in a, a week at this point, um, we're not going to be able to see any of this happen ever again unless people have specifically taken the time to record their adventure and upload that up to YouTube. So not having a cinematic really does destroy some of the um, history of the game, especially with uh, not having any way to really kind of record the voice lines or, or touch base on those voices lines that people said um, in the future for other people who are interested in what has happened with the Sea of Thieves. 
Uh, Professor, I saw you pop up. What, what do you have some thoughts on? I, just, I, I think that it requires intentional planning and, and, and laying out the timing. I think of the Gold Hoarder event in the cave that had a mixture of in-game and cinematic. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that gave you the opportunity to pop out into picture mode from any angle or perspective you wanted to and take pictures of the event as you wanted to see it and remember it. Um, I've got several places where we've gotten pictures as a crew standing next to Bell or, or doing things while that part is going on. And, and that adds again to something unique that you can keep. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm again, I'm, I'm always struck between two, two perspectives of this. Cause I, I see where you're coming from that. Um, uh, when I went to, I recently went with uh, trickster who wasn't here today, unfortunately, uh, to go do the gold hoarder, just, randomly for fun and uh we got done with it and we had that moment that you're talking about with uh ramsey's or ramsey just kind of sharing his thoughts and feelings on the gold hoarder and how this is a, a moment in sea of thieves and you could see like the big starry background um behind the throne you could sit wherever you want while he's talking to us and stuff um but it did kind of break the immersion when you could go behind the big starry backdrop and it just looked like a normal vault room, but you turn around and you come to the front of it and it's this big, beautiful moment. And it, it, it's, it's tough to try and find that balance. Um, I feel like I, I'm, I want both. I feel like I would love to have a pre-rendered full intent of what they think the adventure should flow through as, uh, as a cinematic and then uploaded later so that people who want to know what happened will have the opportunity to see what happens without all of the gameplay requirements that come with playing through that. Uh, essentially, I want them to make a show. I want them to make a TV show. Um, but I also like playing through that TV show in a way. Uh, Norwegian, you had some thoughts? Love that they do the cinematics in game. You can interact. I love the feeling of being able to walk up as a gold hoarder is talking to you and sit on the top of his head or have my head sticking out of a uh, glowing part of the gold hoarder cave um, or sit in the chair while he's talking. Love all of that. But if it's going to be something that's limited time mode with PVP as something as an option in the background, that ruins the lore, that l ruins the story. It doesn't let it progress. It just it leaves a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of how I feel about the whole thing. I wish that they would protect those moments in time. Yeah. Yeah. I could definitely see that. Uh, Professor, I saw you open up there and I think people's, you had some ideas too. I'm just wondering if, if this event wasn't such a hot mess with that and you had the opportunity to easily go back unharassed and, and maybe switch spots. So you were one of them at the top and somebody else was at the, the light and, and you got to see it without having to go through the, toxicity if that would make any difference i think it would I, I i do think that the the people in this situation really impacted the 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 enjoyment of it uh, pre, uh peoples you had some thoughts though yeah um kind of to kylie's uh point what if you did have both i mean what if by default it had the the cinema uh uh, cinematic, um, you know, kind of big presentation that you're wanting to, but at any time you could hold X and it backs you out of that and you have the live action, you know, right there. So if you wanted to run away and do something else, you could, um, you wouldn't have to miss it. You could have that kind of cake and eat it too type thing. I know it'd be more development type time. Um, but maybe that would be a good kind of blend of both to make everybody happy in that regard. <laughs> There is currently a Dragon Ball Z event that is going on in Fortnite. And I know some of you aren't fans of Fortnite. I know some of you are. Uh, but one of the things that they've done is they commissioned a studio to develop a instance, uh, much like what is going on with the Hunter's Cry. And in that instance, uh, they are showing episodes of Dragon Ball Z. I'm not fully sure which ones or anything. I, I don't have the context for it. But there is two ways to watch the episode. One is the drive-in movie theater aspect, where you can look at this giant screen in the arena that they have, and you can walk around, you can interact with things, you can buy stuff from a vendor, you can enjoy the experience as you would at a drive-in theater. 
The other way is in the middle of this arena, there is a cordoned off area and there's little signs around it that tell you this is the full screen experience. And you go into that little area and you hit a button and your screen goes from the arena that you were currently in to just a full on cinematic version of the episode as if you were watching it on TV through like Netflix or Hulu, what have you. I wonder if there's an opportunity for Rare to have a situation or even just a toggle in the settings that allowed you to have uh, the preference to one of these. You know, right now we have the cinematic load screen as a preference. You can either watch the load screen as you're uh, getting into Sea of Thieves where you kind of do the little pan over the map and it tells the story of what Sea of Thieves is. A lot of people have that toggled to skip that cinematic intro. I wonder if that could be expanded to these types of adventures where if you wanted to you could watch a pre-rendered version uh, that wouldn't necessarily have your character in it Um, it might but is at least an opportunity for you to get the full experience without the uh the concern of of whether or not you're going to get killed or or uh moved or knocked off if someone was going to use a blunder bomb and and knock you off the area and you were going to miss part of the story uh or if you wanted to have that you could still have that kind of uh, immersive experience in in the world and see how how it plays out and be there with other people be there with your crew norwegian you, you had some thoughts on this and people's let's get you after other games have done that um it's not exactly what you're describing but apex has a very similar thing where you have the option to watch the beginning of the season intro or uh, when you first load it up for the first time it goes into the story and shows you what's going on um uh, whether that's something that's an option to them, where they have the capability to do it, don't know. But it would be it wouldn't be bad, just so everybody doesn't miss what's going on or what's happened. Because at this point, there's a lot of stuff that's gone by now. Um, I mean, I'd love to go back and look at the shrouded what was it, the shrouded deep one or the, yeah. the shrouded ghost adventure. That would be fantastic to go back and look at. It. Yeah. I would love to be able to have like a over the top panoramic or panoramic view of all the ships and chaos because I wasn't necessarily always in the best position to be experiencing that whole shrouded deep. Sometimes I was stuck below deck, constantly bilging for our lives because we were just getting hammered by all the ships plus the megalodon and other crews and stuff. So uh, I, I'm very curious to see if that would would ever be an opportunity. Tien, you had thoughts. I'm just trolling you on the You're chat. That's being all snarky. I'm doing. That's it. You just want to make fun of me because I talked I'm, about I'm, Fortnite. I'm, I'm fascinated by this idea that other companies make games. I call it Fortnite. Yes, more than more than one night in the forts. It's it's fantastic. I'll I'll have to introduce you. Um, Kylia, did you have some some thoughts on this that you wanted to touch on? I actually, kind of wanted to touch on the combination of this adventure and the Shrouded Deep adventure. It seems like the further along we get in this process, that the more they're trying to make us all work together and put us in shared spaces with each other, but yet continually it still doesn't work. Um, <laughs> and I I feel like I know they're trying to get us to like make friends or have competitive, you know, moments, but it's it's the people that the bad apples are ruining it for everyone. And so I feel like maybe they should try and stop doing that or at least step away from it until they have a better plan of how they can bring groups of people together i i'm very curious to hear this uh carl we haven't heard from you in a bit and you got a thought on this so what what do you got yeah just going back to what i said just then um the whole save golden sands we'll go back to that where you had the decision to either save or destroy where we had to work against each other something like this would probably work better for that type of dynamic it feels more like as if you've got people actually working against you and people actively trying to stop you Whereas in the Save Golden Sands, you didn't. So maybe it's something that needs to be looked at in the future, the next time there's a decision to be made, that people are put in this type of area and you either have to try and save or destroy, effectively. I think it would work well in that type of context. I, I actually agree with you on that as well, too. Um, Hefe, before we move on, uh, you had a thought on, you had a solution for this? Yeah, so I really liked the fact that there in general what they were going for i like the idea that we were coming together kind of as a multi-crew setting to work together to you know go safe merrick i i I thought that was a really kind of cool concept and idea and i like that and 
I feel like, and I mean, I'm not a developer. I mean, it, maybe it's harder than this, but if if that's what they want to have happen, create these future versions of this in these instances. Like, you know, so we obviously that that portion of the game was instanced off from everything else. Why not just build it on the foundation of the Fairy of the Damned? You can be there with other crews. You can do things with, you know, in the Fairy of the Damned. You can emote. You do all your stuff, but you can't uh, inflict or receive damage. If if they want people to work together. Build it on a instance platform where damage just isn't an option. I I feel like that's that this the simple simple issue. There's simple solution there. I mean, it, it, maybe it's I don't know making it too easy. Um, at least in that way they could still get the desired outcome that they wanted of people working together uh, to you know get to an end goal without it turning into you know a dumpster fire. Yeah. Yeah. And and that seems to be two of the main approaches that I've been hearing from a lot of people right now, uh, either have it built out so that people going into this understand that it is an opt in PVP situation where multiple factions are going to be represented, you're going to be coming up against other people who are trying to stop you because they believe so earnestly in their faction, and vice versa, or turn it into a situation where the intent is the the rule and they design around that intent if they want you to work together then everyone needs to work together there's no opportunity to betray anyone because of the limited time uh design and the the original intent for this Ahoy there, Pirates. This is the ad for this episode, and I did want to let you know if you wanted to avoid these and just get a regular filler, you can head over to the Patreon. There's a special feed just for patrons that get the ad-free version. If you want to keep listening, though, I can't say I blame you because this week I want to let you know about Loot Crate and getting 15% off of most crates and crate subscriptions when you use the link and code Robots Radio in the show notes. Also, you can head over to audiobooks.com, get your first three audiobooks for free, and that can include any two vip books or use the affiliate link for green man gaming if you're a pc gamer you'd like to save money on games it's one of the benefit of being a pc gamer head over to green man gaming you can get codes for steam epic any of the different stores that they have deals going on they have deals going on all the time and if you plan on buying there please consider using our affiliate link all of that goes straight to me through the network thank you all so much for everything that you do to support this podcast it means the world to me and i continue to try and improve the quality and the content for you with that pirates let's get back to the show i really like the idea of having both of those situations because i love the idea of, of working together to do something but at the same time i i hate the idea of forcing people who don't believe in and we'll take the pirate lord's perspective for right now as an example uh forcing people into that if that's not what they like if that's not what they want to do so i think that they i think a better approach would be to have uh, a mix of the two have one where people work together and then have another one in the future that allows you to experience the story win or lose of what whatever side like if you get stopped then you get stopped but you still get the end of the story uh and maybe this time it's like a failure or a victory and and kind of base it off of that um how do you guys feel about going forward they talked about how they wanted this to be and this is kind of coming from the the perspective of the the podcast they just put out so a little bit of a spoiler but they said they wanted to have this be an avengers end game scenario where everyone comes through the portals to start stop the dark brethren uh from from getting the secrets from merrick um did anyone feel like that was what was conveyed when they got in here yes no no not at all no <laughs> no no if that's i didn't hear that's what they wanted we were supposed to be pumped at the end yeah we were we were supposed to well uh, uh, we were supposed to um have that kind of avengers endgame moment where uh everyone comes through the portals we all work together to uh go up and save merrick um only to end up uh losing him and and him not coming back to life and and I, th I thought it was very interesting because I personally did not actually get that. So uh, any, anyone else have some feelings on that before we before we move in? Yeah, have you met people who play Sea of Thieves? 
<laughs> I've literally gotten like free shifts in the same like session come after me at once. Or not not the same session, it was like three different days. Apparently that's the legend of Vale for you. Like if you have a digging tornado, everyone's gonna go flock towards it. But it's kinda weird. They, they can do it. They've done it in other events. This one just totally missed the mark. I didn't hear that's what they wanted. Oh no. It brought yeah, me back to random event. cruise with uh, hearing people not even know how to do things. It, it just was so hectic and not coordinated towards what they wanted. I'm curious, <laughs> how do you guys, do you think, I'm, I'm, I really want to get a beat on this now. Is anyone here really love Merrick? I like Merrick. He's actually a pretty good person. And all he wants to do is just fish for the rest of his life away. Like, I mean, which man doesn't want to do that? I, I, would... I missed the Shrouded event, so I do not have that original connection with him. I actually resonated with, with some of the other characters more. Um, I just don't know that I have those feelings for, for Merrick. <laughs> um, Kylia, you said you like him. They are my people. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's... No, I, I, I like Merrick, and, and I like how during the course of Sea of Thieves growing and expanding... There was that whole thing with Derek, and they actually brought Derek into the game. And then when they expanded with the C post, it became Merrick and Derek and Sarek and Zarek and everyone. I, I just it tickles me. I like it. I mean, I'm I'm sad about Merrick, but I think he also made the right decision. I think the most emotional part of that was when you go and you deliver the letter, and it like overlays his voice, and he's talking to his wife. And um, there's actually some really funny text too if you read hers that says that she's like 30 years old. Oh, really? That's Surprising. Uh, the Caesar cruel mistress, apparently. Um, Regis, how you feel about Merrick? And let's get Carl after that. Despite never playing the uh, Hunters the Hungering Deep, because I didn't have a console or PC to play see if he's then, I really I really do like, you know, Merrick, you know, just being a, a humble man and not so uh in a not so uh in a uh, completely bizarre and crazy world. So yeah, I really do like him. And, uh, and this isn't a spoiler for the adventure because I know what happens because, you know, I, I listened to the previous episode. Uh, Merrick made the right choice because, you know, he's got a family now and uh, then the brethren are not, not going to stop until they figure out what's inside to, to find what they want in his head. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's uh, a yeah. lot safer for what his choice is. And, and they talked about in the podcast uh, that they just put out that. Um, Merrick is going to be joining the the uh, Legends of the Sea in the the Sea Dog Tavern, so it'll be very interesting to find out what they do with that. Um, nice to get the confirmation. Uh, I am very yeah. curious, and, and uh, some of you guys are starting to dive into some other characters. What are what what is because we're getting into the next set of adventures. Who wants like what's your next character that you want to have um, kind of showcased now that Merrick is his story is kind of done? Uh, who are we looking to to be like that next person that we work with on future adventures? Anyone? Uh, I was just saying in chat, I like I like Umbra better than I like Merrick, and I'm now trying to process <laughs> why Kylie doesn't like Umbra. <laughs> oh, I'd sail off with Umbra. I didn't say I didn't like umbra i just never really connected with umbra <laughs> very interesting carl i saw you opened up there for a sec yeah to be honest it's not a case of working with but a character i really want to see come back and to learn about what's happened is stitcher jim now i don't know if that would be part of the adventure bear in mind his connections with uh obviously certain members of the dark brethren um and of course the whole flame art side of things um, or if he's going to pop up in the adventure uh, in the uh mystery but it, it, I'm very keen to find out more what's happened with him more than anyone else at the moment. I can't imagine him not being part of all this that's going on right now. It's a really strong point. Um, zombies, did you have something to add on to that? Yeah, I would like to see uh, Wanda. Not not Wanda with an A, but or Wanda with an O. Whoever's running the uh, new, who's ever running the weapon shop on the you know, Saints Outpost. I swear to God, those two are just weird. Wanda with an A, Wanda with an O. They say the same thing. But I would like to see her story of it. Like, what? Sh what is she doing? Yeah, yeah, definitely. How does she deal with all of this, and how is she kind I, of reconciling? I yeah, I think she's got that. PTSD now. <laughs> oh, I think all of them do. Carl, what were you saying? Um, going back to that, wasn't there on one of the recent adventures that she was sent a note by yeah. her sister? 
So I'm sure that we will actually see more about that because that was left with a note and a bit of a, oh, well, what's she going to do type of thing. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, we were doing the adventure, the last adventure, I believe, where we were kind of trying to figure out what was going on and Amaranta had sent her a very taunting note, uh, kind of trying to point out that it's like, oh, you're not, you're not really a sister to, to your sister. You're, you're nothing compared to me. I'm much more, uh, important to your sister than you ever will be kind of thing. Yeah, oh that, that's the one. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine it just reading that and then going, okay, that's the end of that. Yeah, I'm seeing some interesting uh, comments you guys are talking about wanting more suds. You're also talking about wanting to have Guybrush uh, Thwerpwood, which, by the way, I, I'm looking forward to the fact that the remake is getting uh, released on September 19th, International Talk Like a Pirate Day, which was hilarious. More Jack Sparrow. You guys are getting some good thoughts here. Um, I, uh, Carl, I'm actually with you. I... I, I honestly want to see more from Stitcher Jim. I think Stitcher Jim has been laid out to waste and I don't know if that's because of the the voice actor not getting an opportunity to record any lines but I, I very much want to find out uh, what happened to his hand. Um, he's he's intimately connected to the history of uh, the Masked Stranger as well as Duke the Dark Lord and Flameheart still as his kind of boss. Uh, it seems odd that uh, Junior has had no interest in bringing Stitcher in as a lackey uh, in this instance. Um, anyone have some some peeps they want to talk about that they want to see in the upcoming adventures? With all the stuff happening with the mystery, I would like to see Marco and Lissetti come into an adventure to where they're, because up to this point, they've just been NPCs, right? I mean, mm -hmm. nothing that you can really do anything. They, they've, they've not been involved in the game whatsoever unless you go into Arena and you only get to see their involvement in the intro cinematic going into the Arena. Um, and because I'm still not convinced that he's dead, or if he's dead, he's not really dead. He could come back. Uh, that's I, I still think that. Um, I think that those two characters, I feel like they, they should be, I don't know, they're 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 so the kids of the pirate lord. A skeleton. Not counting a skeleton. No, um, I, I just feel like they should they should be have a, a larger role in all of this. I mean, they're again they're they're Ramsey's kids. I mean, they should they should play a bigger role than just you know Lissetti being you know a drunk slob laid out on a beach being sad and you know Demarco being you know it just I don't know it, the way they've been utilized up to this point in the in actual retail. I think is underutilized. It's interesting that you bring that up because I, I have a feeling that the end of the mystery will actually tie them into the game a lot more than we're anticipating. Um, and that will tie into the end of Flameheart story as well, too. Uh, Zombie, did you have uh, some thoughts you wanted to share? It's uh, two. I think DeMarco's in the Lantern because Grey Marrow actually knows how to do it. Why not the Pirate Lord? You know what I mean? Like, actually transferring a soul to an object. But also, the Pirate Lord, I don't think, wanted to, you know, kill his son. Or probably escape to see if he's. Because after what he done, because he fears that people might have chased her. People want to seek revenge out for what he inevitably did in the arena. Putting us against each other. But not trying to go deep in there, I thought, might as well, from my hat, start ringing that story. Yeah. Because in the tavern, you see Guilty. We only know that, but how does the lantern know that? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm very interested to find out more about the mystery, who's leaving the notes, uh, where are the notes leading us to right now. It's leading us to people, crew members, I believe, uh, who are involved with uh, DeMarco, and it's it's all still kind of muddled. I, I've, I feel like it's really kind of run off the rails, and only the insanely uh, dedicated are the ones that are following the clues at this point. And I'm, I'm really hoping that there's a, a, a catch up novel that gets released so that everyone who has missed out on everything that's been going on uh, has an opportunity to understand the overlying mystery. I did see uh, Peoples. You were talking about Morrow, uh, Captain Morrow, over in the Devil's Roar, that you wanted to see them get reconnected to the bigger story. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, she had her um, her crew and, and that kind of wrap up. And then we just kind of left her on the island and um, no one goes and vis visits her these days. And uh, I think it'd be really great uh, as to reinvigor uh, her purpose on, on the seas, I think would be a, a really great ally uh, for l later encounters. 
One of the things that interests me is in the comics uh, for Pendragon Jr., um, there was a scene at the very end where of the comics where he was actually standing with the original crew of the Devil's uh, Shroud. And I was I was kind of wondering where that was leading to, and it never really seemed to lead anywhere. So I, I'd be curious to find out if uh, Pendragon makes an appearance, if he would bring Morrow along and they would get another crew together uh, to to try and uh, help out with whatever they need to help out with. Um, Norwegian, you said she's fine. Not not a big fan of Morrow. I'm sure all the people that we leave on the islands are fine. They're doing just great over there, eating bananas. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Hefe, you brought up something interesting that I think tied into uh, the podcast that we just had, where you said that you were excited that they've uh, fleshed out more of the story. Yeah, it was the interview from Gamescom uh, is where uh, they were they were just talking about kind of like, kind of where things are going, and I was really encouraged to hear that uh, that they already have um, one to a year to a year and a half worth of like detailed story ready to go like even with like the inflection points of choices and this and that and then overarching they've got they said years worth of kind of where the big story is is where they want it to go the fact that they've that this game is four years old and they still have years worth of content that they want to do and have a vision for um really made me excited because i love this game i've never played one game as long as i've played this game and and just to hear um the devs say you know that we're not anywhere close to the end of it uh i was really encouraged by that you know, i would agree with that jefe but but i do worry if they don't tie up some of these storylines that that we forget where they even started and and not really appreciate how they end I agree with that. It could be it's it, it could be really easily a Game of Thrones type situation where you've got so many fractured storylines that it's hard to keep track of what's going on where. They do need to start wrapping some things up for sure. How do you all feel about uh, Flameheart's story getting wrapped up? It's time. Yeah, I was gonna say about them time. Yeah, one hundred percent. That needs to be done. Are any of you guys missing the big skull in the cloud yet? I am not missing Potato Head whatsoever. <laughs> I, I do miss being threatened. Uh, I've got I've got an audio clip of him every now and I'll play it and uh, it'll send people into eye twitching and, and convulsions. <laughs> I just wanna kill him one more time. Just kill his like final ghost ship one more time. So I can hear him just go, I'll be back for now. Or whatever he says. <laughs> it is nice though, not sailing and just going to go make a sandwich and grab a glass of water and realize oops, I accidentally sailed into Mr. Potato Head's area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, or the fact that someone accidentally skimmed the edge of it and now it's going to be stuck there for the next two hours and we won't get a, a Fort of Fortune or something. Awesome. Well, we're coming up on the last 10 minutes. Uh, I would love to kind of hear some some feelings about uh, what's going to happen with the, the little bit of a tease. And if this is a bit of a spoiler, let me kind of preface it a bit. But in the podcast, uh, they talked about how the next decision point will probably involve the repercussions of our last decision point uh, and the retaliation of Flameheart. Um, in the last one, we had to choose whether or not we were saving Golden Sands or ruining Golden Sands. I feel like we made the wrong decision there, and I'm looking forward to the retribution of Flameheart as a result. Uh, I am very curious to hear do you are are you all excited for what feels like could potentially be an all out war or what do you think would be a good decision point for them? Anyone have any ideas? Uh, oh, you mean, you mean doing a cooperative team. event? <laughs> Sorry, let's let's uh let me get uh Tia and jump in with your thoughts again because I, I missed it there. Oh, you mean to do a, a uh collaborative event where we all have to come in and 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 join in uh, and do one type of thing? together in a coordinated fashion that that sounds very uh uh doable it'll work perfectly too soon, right? man. Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> zombie did you have some thoughts uh, yeah i'm thinking well since the gold horror is dead i was thinking maybe order of souls versus flame art or reaper's bones mm. because we got we basically had well you know merrick's team the hunter's call going up against well flame art team the Free bones. Maybe not having like an event type like that, but like an adventure. 
or adventure event style thing where it's like groupers against the worlds and stuff like that. I can definitely see it. I can definitely see. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of, I'm very curious to see what they decide to do with this. And, uh, Kylie to, to kind of speak to one thing that you said in chat here that they didn't do anything with it. And it's quote unquote, new golden sands. Uh, I believe the tease here is that Mike has stated on the latest podcast that there's a reason why we call all of our outposts outposts uh, and not forts or towns. And that to save Golden Sands, uh, there's probably going to be some changes. Um, and, and I think uh, Chris Davies actually teased at this. You don't, you don't have someone break into your home and then just continue to leave your front door unlocked. You tend to change things up. You, you get a, an alarm system installed. You, know, you get a, a dog for the backyard. You make changes to fortify your home so that it doesn't happen again. And I, I'm very interested to see the true golden age of piracy come to sea of thieves where we have built up forts where we have true establishments where there are bigger towns bigger vendors things like that uh i'm very curious um you guys are bringing up some really good things in uh a chat here peoples you're talking about duke versus bell yeah i i think we need to have not just a, a place um you know kind of thought over but actually having two prominent people and you know one person's got to die you know mm-hmm. whether it be whether it be duke whether it be bell uh or or whoever i, I don't really i just threw out two names um but we need to have some some re- real uh repercussions as opposed to some we're going to put some cannons on the outside of golden sands and call it good you know type thing so um i really think that it needs to be something you know big like that well, th- we just had Merrick die. Was his death not good enough? But is he really dead? I mean, do, do people really die in, in Sea of Thieves? I mean, we, I mean, we have spectral people all the way around. I mean, Bell's spectral to begin with, but I, but I, I mean, I'm, I mean, snuffed out of existence is what I'm looking for. So DeMarco? Uh, we're not convinced he's dead. Touche. Uh, I'm seeing Carl. You're talking about Brethren versus Flameheart. Yeah, I feel that's the more natural way for this to go now because obviously it was a flame heart and the reapers that were trying to take golden sands and now we got this side with dark brethren coming so we're not just fight you know the adventure's not just been about one of them it's been about both Mm -hmm. so at some point there's got to be a a crossing of them too i believe especially with the fact obviously wonder and flame hearts history um i just feel like there might be some sort of dynamic there and our choice will lead to the dark brethren get hold of something or flame heart been resurrected or something to benefit them i feel like a decision on that would be better than a good versus bad i like more like i like that i like that a lot um professor i i i got to thinking about that that would be nice to see that conclusion but those two groups really leave most of us kind of as spectators because they're both bad um seems interesting i've got to choose the lesser evil i guess i'm very curious i'd I'd like to get some opinions i'm going to give everyone 50 doubloons right now you get to make a bet who's going to win uh brethren or flameheart i want to go down the list here hefe between uh the brother dark brethren court and the captain versus flameheart senior and the reapers who are you placing your bets on uh, my bets will be on the brethren because we really don't have a whole lot of story for them up to this point as a group whereas with flameheart we're on the tail end of his of his story arc whereas i think we're kind of on the upward swing of the story arc of the brethren so just from a storytelling perspective i would go with the brethren going with the brethren they're gonna win all right carl who are you picking uh probably the i'll probably side with the brethren um uh, just because one has got a lot of knowledge on flameheart mm-hmm. and flameheart's got a lot of enemies already Whereas the brethren are fairly new, so they might get away a bit more, perhaps. Interesting. I like that rationale. Kylia, who are you betting on? I am also voting on the brethren. Really? Okay. I, I think that they've got more of a varied background and pool of skills to pull from than Flameheart's team does. Hmm. All right. Uh, okay. Well, uh, Norwegian. Who are you betting on? I'm going to have to also go with the Dark Brethren. I mean, they've got Disney characters on their side. They're going to wow. win. man. Okay. Uh, Peoples, who are you voting for? 
you know, Logan, you haven't given us a lot of a lot of options here because just narratively, I mean, it's got to be the brethren that that wins. I mean, Flameheart has tried over and over and is now the wily e. coyote of the <laughs> uh, of the Sea of Threes world. Um, and um, just yeah, as far as how much tail is left on uh, their story, there's more ways to go with the with the brethren. So I mean, if we're putting real doubloons on the table, you're forcing my hand and picking the brethren. Oh my gosh, I'm very surprised by this. Okay, uh, Regis, uh, who are you placing your bet on? Doc Brethren. Once Lechuck and possibly Captain Hulk join the Doc Brethren. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, TN, where's your 50 doubloons going? You're making me fight against my head and my heart here. <laughs> I want to see fake Duke dead. Um, and, and I, 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 I think that uh, flame hearts a much more, um, if you're talking about cinematic baddie, mm. but y'all are with my head, I would have to acknowledge there's a lot more connections for continuing story, um, including bringing in, you know, the the trade union and and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I, if I'm going with my brain. It's it's probably the brethren, but my heart says I'd rather see Flameheart. All right, placing bets down on the brethren. Zombies, you are the last one to chime in. Brethren, yeah, and I know what people are going to think, and this is going to be weird. Usually in wars, there's strategy involved. It's usually the one who comes out most strategic actually comes out on top. I would say Flameheart's can win this because he's already got four of the most powerful enemies we ever encountered. The Ashen Lords. Warden Chi, Captain Grimm, El Terratio, and Red Roof. They all have different purposes. Flameheart's going to win this story. Sorry, but that's the best way to put it. Interesting. All right. Well, uh, I am placing my bets on flame heart and here's the reason why uh back in 2017 we got a cinematic trailer that was a beautiful fly through of sea of thieves we saw a bunch of different crews doing a bunch of different stuff um and we got to see flame heart uh against a big stone archway in his skeleton captain form we still have not seen his body come to life i believe he will get resurrected i will believe that the uh reaper's bones hideout will get a pirate legend tavern-esque style the door will open we will be recruiting pirates to become skeleton lords i believe that stitcher jim will be instrumental in this as he knows how to put souls into bodies uh, i think that the odds of the captain making their way to the sea of thieves will eventually happen but you have a, a broken bilge rat, a, a scorned lover, and a, a feisty young sea dog as your dark brethren court. I don't think that they have quite the resources that they need. They are still trying to find out even what they can get with the secrets that they possibly could pull from Merrick's uh, soul to be able to, to fight against the uh, pirate lord and Ramses, all of his uh, forces in, in the Sea of Thieves. I think the, the flame heart story is um much bigger and i think that we are going to it's it's going to be a monumental collaboration between everyone to be able to stop the lord of sea of thieves so and i'm looking forward to making a ton off of your guys's doubloons with the odds that i'm seeing right now all right so I love what you guys have brought to the table. I, I love the conversation that we've had with this. Um, I think you guys have really, really kind of showed what I think is is really important about Sea of Thieves, which is we want to be able to experience the story. We don't want to be griefed while trying to do that. And if Rare wants to build something that offers opportunities for players to do so, it needs to be known from the get-go that it, that is the opt-in experience. Um, I'm, I'm loving that you guys have some real strong feelings about the different characters in the Sea of Thieves as well, too. So thank you for bringing that. Uh, as we're kind of uh, closing out this episode, I want to work down the list. If you guys have any uh, last-minute things you want to share or talk about or, or uh, say as we kind of head out um, definitely feel free to do so so uh, going down the list El Jefe Esteban uh, thank you for joining us uh, anything you want to share with anyone uh, just if anybody needs anything uh, help with anything just remember that the Sherpa program is there uh, Chinzo has done a really good job kind of setting that up um, and they, we've, we've got folks literally around the world who are, have volunteered to help folks out so we can hopefully get you paired up with someone that's you know 
in a time zone that fits your schedule. Um, so just reach out to us uh, on the Discord in uh, in the Sherpa channel, and we'll be more than happy to help you out. Definitely. PvP pirates ready to go to help people through adventures. Uh, Carl, as we round out, anything you want to share or say as we uh, head out here? No, um, obviously it's my first one, so it's been a pleasure having a good chat about everything. Um, and yeah, I look forward to the next one. Excellent, excellent. I look forward to it as well. Kylia, thank you for jumping by or coming in and, and sharing some feelings as well. Uh, you're you're uh, taking the place as the resident uh, female on the panel, Mina stepping out because of the number of folks. Um, anything you want to share or, or share... Uh, 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 promote yeah yes both uh i do want to kind of jump off of what hafe said i have a group of people that sails on monday evenings around 8 8 30 mountain standard time so if you're a late night person and you're looking for some people to help you get something done or just a crew to sail with um definitely hit me up and then shameless promotion uh please check out destination andy we recently split it off onto its own feed and uh we have a new episode coming in soon Awesome. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, I have no bias towards that at all. Uh, Norwegian, as we're kind of rounding things out, anything you want to share with anyone or promote? I just want to say thank you to everybody in the community in the Sherpas. Everybody in this group has been fantastic, wonderful. Um, meeting new people that I sail with and always having a crew now. It's just this entire group is a great uh, bunch of people. So thank you. Thank you. Really kind words. I appreciate it. Um, peoples always bringing in hot topics anything you want to share or say as we round things out no just really really thankful for for everybody uh, many hands make light work there are a lot of people in this community that make a lot of things happen and then just uh shameless promotion uh you know for for my crew in in, in chenzo monday wednesdays and fridays typically around uh 8 30 central um 9 30 eastern which is what 630 Pacific. Uh come ch come check us out, uh Chenzo Rama and um say hey. Definitely mature rated content, just as a heads up. It can be. <laughs> Every time I've gone in, it's been mature rated. I've never seen a, a, a light episode or a live <laughs> stream. Um, Regis, anything going on with you that you want to share with us? Uh not much. Just uh I'm, I'm still I still got my fanfic, obviously, my My Little Pirate crossover of CFEs and My Little Pony. Now added with Captain Jack Sparrow and Pirates of the Caribbean. Awesome. Probably upload probably upload a new chapter whenever I feel like it, to be honest. Let the muses do their job, man. You keep writing though. Yeah. Yeah. TN, as we round things out, anything you want to share or promote? Absolutely. Uh, you know, since Rare did Captaincy, the Black Rose crew has been recognized about three times. And it's been just amazing to to hear people yell out, um, either from the community or people that must be listening to the podcast. I, I would like to do an apology. Bam Bam, I am sorry that our crew killed you. We didn't realize that it was you until uh, your ghost screamed out, Kill hold! And then you disappeared. Uh, <laughs> but it's been really fun. I think that's a, that's a really cool thing with Captaincy. So good job, Rare. Yeah, it's it's been really cool to see that. And, and the, the least uh faithful apology i've ever heard from someone murdering someone else definitely appreciate the attempt it's it's shoot first man i i did we, we gotta be us oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's great stuff um and then of course but not, not you know last but not least obviously zombie jumping in here sharing some thoughts anything you want to uh share as we round things out or things that you want to promote uh nothing to promote just saying uh if you ever see a ship by the name of the Bounty Hunter, please try not to make me fire first, or at least you fire first. I know it's called the Sea of Thieves, but you don't have to be a Richard. It's it, <laughs> it's very true. Um, I, I love the ideas of uh, everyone kind of uh, seeing the shoot first or uh, see like you know who's going to be the instigator in a situation. Always, always really tenuous. Uh, situations on the seas so and and as always hopefully you guys all come out of it at the end saying ggs um i know a lot of you guys do and i and i appreciate that a lot being able to to pop into streams uh or play with you and having a good fight and uh, but at the end of it having the ggs it's that's what it's all about it's one of the things i love about the uh the ambassador program that xbox does uh tn uh very neutral chaos i, I appreciate that 100 percent um also 
Well, thank you all so much for spending the time with me. Um, I love getting these episodes in. I love getting to talk with you all and see how things are going uh, with your adventures. And look forward to next month. Let's see. I'm going to take a look at the calendar right now. September, uh, the last Monday is on the 26th. So if you're listening to this and you happen to be a captain in the Gold Hoarder channel, uh, you can join us on the 24th which will be the last Saturday, we'll be recording another episode of the community episodes for the Keelhauled podcast. And I look forward to seeing everyone here uh, for next week's epi- or next month's episode um, for that. So love you all. Thank you so much. I will talk to you all in the future. Six years since the bombs fell. And since I've left the vault, I've been trying to rebuild. This isn't the Appalachia that I remember. There's so much more to everything going on. And I promise to find the answer. So if you're out there, if you're listening, just hone in on these coordinates. There's a place for you at the end. Omega. The Omega Broadcast Fallout Story is available on iTunes, Spotify, and many great podcasting sources. Do you love the Mass Effect series? And are you looking to learn even more about Mass Effect? The things that you didn't even know that you didn't know? Well, this is your host, Tom, or Robots, and me and my co-host, N7 Legend, do a show called The Mass Effect Lorecast. It is available on whatever podcatcher you're listening to this right now. We also do it live on twitch.tv slash robots radio, 1030 Eastern, 730 Pacific on Sunday nights. So go look it up right now. The Mass Effect Lorecast. We'd love to have you join us.